Attackers can modify indicators of compromise easily, reducing the usefulness of sharing and using indicators of compromise. The goal of the Information Sharing and Scalable Network Defense Initiative is to go beyond indicators when sharing information about an attack. In this demonstration, we will go over the sharing of attack behaviors between two enterprises, Blue and Indigo. We will also go over response actions initiated at the Indigo Enterprise after it receives and uses the shared information from the Blue Enterprise. An attack is detected on the Blue Network initiating response actions. Attack information is shared by Blue to a message broker outside of both enterprises. A broker client at the Indigo Enterprise receives this information, triggering Indigo's mitigations against the attack behavior shared by Blue. The Blue Enterprise uses Splunk as its seam and Demisto as its orchestrator. The Indigo Enterprise uses Splunk as its seam and Phantom as its orchestrator. RabbitMQ is used as the message broker between the enterprises. The attack stages included in this video are shown on screen. Note that reconnaissance and weaponization stages are left out to focus on attacks occurring within the target network. The first stage of the attack consists of attaching a malicious link to a phishing email. When a user mistakenly clicks on a malicious link, a program is launched that establishes a command and control channel back to the attacker's Cobalt Strike machine. After gaining access, the attacker establishes persistence on the box and creates a backdoor. So, even if the system is restarted, a process will be created on startup that will re-establish communications with the attacker's machine. Next, the attacker collects credentials from the initial host and then uses pass the hash to move laterally to a target machine. Finally, the attacker exfiltrates some valuable data residing on the second target machine. For this demo, we will display two screens. On the left is the target machine and on the right is the attacker's machine. The target is running standard Windows 10. The attacker is utilizing Cobalt Strike. In this clip, we have already created a payload in the form of a Word document. Now we will host it under our Cobalt Strike server. Here we see the URI created by Cobalt Strike. We copy it and paste it into a link provided in the email that we create. We send the phishing email to the target email address. On the target machine, the user falls for the phishing and clicks the link. The user then opens the document and enables the macro. After enabling the macro, an indicator on the attacker's Cobalt Strike box shows that we have successfully hooked the victim's machine. The next step is to interact with the session and send commands to the victim machine. We will send a sleep command so that the target beacons back to the attacker's box every second. Now that initial access and a C2 channel has been established, the attacker wants to maintain persistence on the box. This can be done by creating a script that will call back to the attacker's box every time the target machine is rebooted. To create the payload, first we create a payload similar to the macro used in the initial phishing email. We will use a PowerShell script and name it backdoor.bat, short for batch files. We will now choose the location where we want our persistent script to live. Here, we cd to the user's temp directory. Then, we use the upload command to upload the script to the target location. We can then list to see that our script has been uploaded to the desired location on the target machine. After placing the script on the target machine, we run a PowerShell command to create a new item under the local machine's run registry and have the value set to the absolute path of the bash script we uploaded. The name can be anything, but we'll go with backdoor. We'll set the value to the path of the script we uploaded earlier. Entries in the run key will execute on startup, so by placing the batch script as one of the entries, persistence is established. On the target box, if we go to the registry editor, we can look inside the run registry key to see if the value was properly added. After refreshing the entries, we see that backdoor has been added to the run key. After establishing persistence, we harvest credentials by right-clicking on the box, going to Access, and choosing to dump hashes. Now, we have the hash credentials for this list of users. These can be unencrypted using a password cracker, for instance, but for now, we'll just use these hashes directly. Next, we want to perform some quick reconnaissance so we can run the NetView command on target. 
This will display all other computers and associated IP addresses that are connected to the same domain. In the Target View panel, we are able to see NetView results. From the Target tab, we can move to the next Target machine by leveraging our current session opened on our HR01. We right-click on the Target, log in, and choose PS Exec. On the top of the window, there's the list of hashes we dumped earlier. We can select one to use and it populates the below user password and domain fields. We can choose the same listener as we used for our initial attack. We choose the first target session as the pivot point. Now that we have a session on the next target's machine, we'll set the sleep timer to 1 on this target as well. On the second machine, we can browse the file directory and look for some valuable data that may be residing on the machine. Once we've found the file that we want to download, we can right-click the file and select Download. We can interact with our session to check the status of the download. We can then go to the Downloads tab where it shows the file we download from the target. We sync the files to get them onto our attacker machine from the Cobalt Strike server. The workflow begins following the attack against Blue, where multiple Splunk alerts trigger a Demisto incident. The left window shows the Demisto dashboard in the Blue Enterprise. The right window shows the broker client in Indigo listening for data from RabbitMQ. The Demisto playbook handling the sharing of behaviors waits for the analyst to input the information to send to RabbitMQ. The analyst enters the behavior information to share. When the task is completed, the playbook sends the information to RabbitMQ and is published by the broker. The information is received by the broker client in Indigo. The shared information shows a combination of user activity associated with more advanced attacks on a network instead of indicators. Once the information is received in Indigo, Splunk alerts are dynamically created in the second enterprise based on the information shared. This was done using the Splunk API. This is a sample JSON structure used in this demonstration to represent behavior information. Next, the created Splunk alerts in Indigo will trigger on past log data and begin Indigo's response mitigations. There are three alerts, each focusing on a different behavior scene, DNS, host, and user activity. For demonstration purposes, the alerts triggered on past events in Indigo Splunk. This suggests that Indigo has experienced a similar attack in the past. However, if the alerts had been triggered in real time, the attack would have been detected and blocked. Once the Splunk alerts are triggered, automated mitigations can be run using Phantom. For the DNS alert, a malicious domain is blocked on the domain controller. For the user activity alert, an Active Directory user is disabled. For the host activity alert, a machine is quarantined via Carbon Black response. In Indigo Splunk, events associated with alerts can be manually sent to Phantom via event forwarding through the Splunk Phantom app. In the app's dashboard, the analyst chooses which mitigations to run in Indigo by exporting the Splunk alerts as a saved search. This allows the analyst to decide which behaviors to address in their specific enterprise. Before the mitigations are applied, there are no blocked domains and the user bad guy is enabled. The machine HR01 is also unquarantined, as shown in the Carbon Black web interface. Events matching the alerts are exported to Phantom by the analyst. The Phantom playbook performing the mitigation is different depending on which saved search is exported. As shown in the web interface, Carbon Black has isolated the machine HR01. A PowerShell script checking if the mitigations have been applied is run on the domain controller. The script's output indicates that a new DNS policy has been created and that the user bad guy has been disabled. We have shown attack behaviors being shared from Blue to Indigo. Through sharing, Indigo was able to identify events that suggested compromise of its systems and conduct appropriate actions to address them. This concludes the demonstration for sharing attack behaviors between two organizations and executing subsequent response actions.